So, in the beginning, God created... No, anyway. In the opening, we have Rowan shooting Jason to knock him back into the big refrigerator behind him. And, fortunately, her very last round actually does propel him back as the only one of the several that she fires. When the the douche is talking to the military leader dude, you know, Tony Todd wannabe, he's trying to, you know, buy his willingness to leave Jason alive, to catch him alive, however the heck they would actually go about doing so. It's kind of funny, the implication that no military people ever care about money. I get that they also do a kind of joke on them right after with, you know, ah, military people just want to blow stuff up. But still, I'm not buying it. If you can't get here in less than 30 minutes, the pizza will be free. So, in the future, machines automatically heal you and upgrade you if you land in them without anyone needing to at all press any buttons or do anything. Not even a voice command, nothing. So when KM fights Jason, she does freaking tricks. I mean, anyone who knows anything about guns will tell you that what she's doing, much of what she's doing, would worsen her aim, not improve it. She would have a hard time hitting anything with all the fancy moves clearly just thrown in to make it look cool and to give them something they could put in the trailer and such. Why is it that she shoots him into the one room on the entire ship that they can't put him in because he'll be healed? And why do they leave him there knowing that she's, you know, shot his way into the healing section or whatever? Wouldn't it make more sense if she had stopped and said, hey, this is the healing... Isn't she supposed to be the smart one, anyway? Is it just me, or do we never know where anyone is in relation to... anyone not in the shot, and or Jason? I mean, I get that sometimes they're trying to hide Jason, but other times they appear to be building up to, ooh, Jason's coming closer, but we don't know where he is in relation to where they are, so we don't know how close he is, or how scared we should be, or if we should be scared at all, as he's knocking down metal door after metal door with a single punch. I know he was super humanly strong before, but still, that upgrade certainly did wonders on him. This has that sort of joke about that Jason wakes up when, you know, premarital sex is had. But if you count the fetish scene, I guess you'd call it, that was actually the second time then that he woke up. I mean, are we supposed to believe that the professor and student were married, or that there wasn't anything immoral going on there. I mean, I'm not talking about the fetish, although I'm sure many people think that stuff is immoral, but she was screwing him, I think that might actually have been what she was doing, in order to get a passing grade. Unless it was sex ed, I doubt she'd have to have sex with him to get a passing grade. Near the end, there is no way that Brodsky could actually have circled around and gotten there before Jason did. Jason was being propelled by the explosion, and Brodsky's supposed to have used his jetpack to fly all the way around and just 
you know, intercept him just in time. I'm not buying it. I do kind of like that the very ending sort of sets up, you know, maybe there is, I mean, all we see is the mask, so he could still be there. You know, having landed on, is that Earth 2 then? Or I guess they made a crystal lake again, just in case, you know, in case Jason returned and would need some place to go kill teenagers. Interesting. It does, of course, suck just a little bit that this movie clearly takes place after Freddy vs. Jason, so the very existence of this movie spoils the ending of Freddy vs. Jason. So anyway, those were my thoughts on Jason X. 